Good morning. Let's try it again. Good morning. Welcome to TEDx Drexel University number two. As Dee said, I'm Wayne Wormley, Dean of Business and Technology at Community College of Philadelphia. It's an honor to be here. In a way, it's a homecoming. If you know my history, you know I spent 10 years here at Drexel back in the mid 80s to the mid 90s. Drexel has undergone its own transformation. But I'm really delighted to be here today to talk to you about this next. When I was invited to speak, I was told you can talk about anything. Well, I didn't want to talk about just anything, but something that I had some passion about. One of those things is Philadelphia. The other is the future. So this conversation tries to connect the dots. How many of you have visited Walt Disney World Resort in Orlando, Florida? Show of hands. A lot of hands here. You always see the commercial, you know, I just won the Super Bowl and I'm going to Disney World. So it, it works. A lot of people have done that. And so I thought today I would talk about three things. So turn to your neighbor and say three things. Three things, okay. So if you, if you think about Walt Disney World, and I always associate the future with Walt Disney World, and if you visited there, you have probably visited Epcot. Everyone seen Epcot? Here's an iconic image. Spaceship Earth, right? The world, the geodesic dome. Drexel used to have a geodesic semi-dome over where the, dra the dragon is now. So this notion of we're all on this spaceship, but in this case, I suggested, well, let's think about Philadelphia as spaceship Philadelphia for the future. So here is a view of that future as envisioned in 1977, one of the master plan drawings from Epcot. Very powerful image, you see the iconic spaceship Earth and a number of things around this. So by Epcot, we are talking about experimental, prototype, community or city of the future and of tomorrow. So here's the question for you and I've gotten very interested in urban design questions, having lived in Philadelphia now almost 30 years. So is it possible for Philly, Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love, and some would say sisterly affection, to become an experimental prototype community of tomorrow? In other words, Pepcot. Okay, so that's, that's the idea. Now imagine, if you will, here's a city in transformation. Drexel is developing its innovation corridor up Lancaster Avenue. The city of Philadelphia has just released the Lower Schuylkill Master Plan. It has three campuses. It has an innovation district that is Drexel and Penn and, and University of the Sciences. It has an energy corridor the Philadelphia uh, uh, corridor down at the old Sunoco plant, now called Philadelphia Energy Solutions, and it has a logistics hub, the airport, the south port, deep water port, a lot of transformation. Aside from the entrepreneurial activity, the university city district, all that's going on in old city uh, as was just mentioned up in uh, Port Richmond last night, if you were at any of the First Friday events, you know, they're having open studio weekend. So think about that as Philadelphia in Renaissance. What would it look like? 
how would this differ from the way it looks today? Well, let's look at Philadelphia as William Penn imagined it. Here's a nice layout of the city early on. Here's another view. How about this one? Taken from space, we have an astronaut with us today. This is Philadelphia. Of course, a lot depends on your vantage point, how you see what you're looking at from on high and so forth. How about this? Very recent photograph, you know what's happening on the Schuylkill, the transformation that's going on. So all of the signs are there. Major transformation, beautiful city, Pepcot, here it comes. But let's consider some other facts. Over half of working age adults in Philadelphia are considered low literate. Over one quarter of Philadelphians are classified as poor in the latest US census. One quarter of the population. Unemployment among residents fell to 10.5% in 2012, but at the same time, a third of the adults in Philadelphia who can be working are not working and not looking for work. One in five 16 to 24 year olds in Philadelphia are not going to school and not working. They don't have the benefit of being here at Drexel or Penn or at Community College where where I currently work. So these could be very discouraging statistics, especially in our proposed PEPCOT of the future. So my purpose, again, is to remind us that Spaceship Earth, Spaceship Philadelphia, does in fact include various realities depending on one's vantage point. So it may sound like John Carpenter's great science fiction uh, movie, The Philadelphia Experiment. I don't know if you can see that ship uh, sinking slowly into the ocean. So of course, our view is that that is not the reality of, of Philadelphia either now or for the future. So what are we to do? I would suggest three things, remember. Three things, turn to your neighbor, three things. Three things, okay. First thing, keep it real. You know, if you're in Philadelphia, people are gonna tell you, keep it real. Sometimes you'll hear them say, be authentic, right? Keep it real. Now what does uh, the second piece say? It says, integrity matters, integrity matters. Integrity counts. Thirdly, walk the talk. So these are three things. Let me briefly elaborate. Keeping it real means dealing with reality and the way things are rather than overlooking challenging uh, challenges and pretending that they don't exist and hoping that they'll go away. This is our reality. There are wonderful transformational things in process. The airport, all of the, the different uh, campuses that I mentioned, thousands of jobs. My fear from where I sit at community college is we will have this huge population in Philadelphia untouched. That is the unemployed, the undereducated, untouched. So opportunity is here and people will come in and take those opportunities. We can't let that happen, it's an opportunity. Integrity matters in construction and in ourselves. As JR said, once you lose your integrity, everything else is easy, right? J.R. Ewing from the old Dallas TV show. So integrity matters. We have to fulfill our obligations to one another, to everyone on Spaceship Philadelphia. Here is a little theory, I'll call it invisible theory, to help us uh, con consider the third point. I spent a year 
at the Gestalt Institute in Cleveland, and I was introduced to this concept of the paradoxical theory of change, and I offer it to you to consider as well. According to the theory, and this was presented by Arnold Beiser, a well-known Gestalt therapist, he says, in order for change to occur, one has to become more fully what you are, rather than being something that you are not. Drexel is an excellent example. When I was here, mid-80s, mid-90s, they were going through major change. It was going through uh, a capital campaign, 1891, 1991. And the big argument was, can we be pen? And the answer was, no, you need to be yourself. You need to be who Drexel is. And I, and I think what Papadakis and other presidents have come to do is to explore more fully who Drexel is. That's how you change. So walk the talk. We are the city of brotherly love. We know it, we say it all the time, almost daily. You have the iconic sculpture in Love Park in Philadelphia. So Philadelphia, Greek, city of brotherly love. And yet, if that is truly who we are, then how can we treat each other the way we do? I looked up what city of brotherly hate would sound like. It is Mesodelphia, right from the Greek. So being consistent with the paradoxical theory of change, my suggestion is we have to explore more fully what that means. So remember three things. What were they? Keep it real. Integrity matters. Walk the talk. Thank you.